Hello, everyone. I hope all of you are doing great. Uh, can I have some confirmation? Am I absolutely crystal clear? Hello, hello, hello. Okay, thank you very much. Thank you for the confirmation from Zoha to Ikram. Thank you, everyone. Thank you, Janvi. Thank you, Kavish. Thank you. Okay, so I, well, first of all, welcome to this K2 of the Game Changer webinar. And I really hope so that by the end of today's session, you will feel a lot more confident with respect to your second major topic, which is called systems and controls. And just like yesterday, well, I'll be discussing a relatively complicated past paper question. And I will make sure that I will be discussing a question which we have not discussed uh, during the session. So it, it has to be a new question. So before we proceed, uh, okay, before we proceed, I would like some confirmation from your side regarding your progress towards the glory. So it's been approximately uh, 22 hours since we said goodbye to each other and now we are back. So what about the last 22 hours? The burning question is, did you prepare a full audit risk question by yourself, for yourself from the December 2022 attempt, a very complicated and a relatively challenging question. And the name of that question was Magpie. So I requested each and every one to please follow and make the best use of these days. And how are you going to make the best use of these game changer webinars? So if you enjoyed and if you loved and if you understood Magpie yesterday, and we realized that examiner asked us for seven auditors, I believe. And in the solution, I think there were nine auditors or maybe 10 and almost six, seven out of nine, 10 were old auditors for us. And considering the fact seven were old, considering the fact that that question was an extremely difficult and a challenging question. Some other question you can, once you're done with this question, if you are going to try some other question, you will find, you know, the weightage of old points to be on a higher side. So is there anyone who could inspire us through the chat box? Who could let me know? Okay, starting from Janvi, yes, sir, I did a full audit risk question and some OT case questions. That's great, Janvi. That's the spirit. Great from, from yes, uh, well, yes, from Zoha, which is great. Yes, sir. Okay, Kavish did it twice. That's great. Wonderful. Kavish, did you type it? Kadeen is saying yes. Jaila is saying yes. And Tanish is back with yes, sir. So lovely. So Kadeen is saying, sir, I did magpie. That's great. Ashmi did magpie. So, well, that's the beauty and that's the point. Okay, thank you, Ahmad. Okay, uh, well, thank you, Yusuf. Well, this is how you make best out of these revision courses. These revision courses play a very important role. Trust me, you will realize the importance of all that hard work on Thursday, 7th March, 2024, when you will come out of the examin examination center, you will realize that you fall in the second category where you have secured the paper rather than just attempting the paper. Okay, Zoha has completed the whole file for the bookish knowledge. Well, Zoha, uh, what about that bookish knowledge file? From MacPy to recorded communication, are you referring to those questions or are you referring to questions which are relevant to controls as well? So yes, okay, both. Thank you, Zoha. I would love to see your file in your relevant WhatsApp group. So do share your file directly in the WhatsApp group. So those, you know, all that effort is extremely important. Anyone out there who's listening to me, probably as, as a recorded class, Guys, well, ideally speaking, you need to prepare your straightforward bookish knowledge file by yourself. 
because once you will prepare that file once you will type something for yourself with the help of the book with the help of the solutions available in the at the back of the exam kit automatically something would be retained in your mind your mind will absorb a lot more when you are going to type it you are naturally speaking your wording and your typing speed would improve so you got to type it and there is no rocket science in it it's very convenient maybe you need to cut few points but you need to type it with the help of the solution so how are you going to make those straight forward bookish knowledge files well i i think i highlighted that quite a lot in the yesterday's lecture so yes okay so what about uh, well there are two very important numbers in front of you well the first number belongs to me and the second number belongs to vipi so if anyone out there who is looking forward to get admission in the regular batch maybe for the you know you never know for the june attempt or for that matter if you want to enroll in the crash or the revision batch well you are more than welcome to join vipi revision camp is open it's been 5 to 6 days approximately we yeah, have 5 days revision camp is open so you are more than welcome to join the revision camp and you will have access to the pre recorded content to the live mock to the mock debrief and i think this is a great value for money so skipping all that well what about the course content as i told you yesterday as well that there are seven topics in total and we concentrated and we focused on one topic which is called audit risk and planning let's discuss the second major topic which is called internal control systems okay what about internal control systems well usually usually not a guarantee examiner would blend internal control systems usually examiner would blend internal control systems with corporate governance or examiner would blend internal control systems with internal audit but on top of that examiner could blend substantive procedures as well so mind you substantive procedure could be part of the audit risk question substantive procedure could be part of the internal control system question and yes substantive procedure would be there as their own category of the question so no doubt substantive procedures are extremely critical and extremely important so let's move to the well let's move to the topic called systems and controls which is the second major topic we have now what what do we have to you know what should be what what we need to learn regarding this topic well first of all we need to prepare ourselves for the straight forward bookish knowledge what is an internal control system or what are internal control systems in general so those internal control systems are the policies and procedures well i would say rules and regulation a set of do's and don'ts designed by the management designed by the management can you share uh, please share in the plant which is an important question okay give me a minute can you share mark wise importance on three okay first of all oh okay. first of all i'm not saying that audit risk is less important as compared to internal control systems i'm not saying that i'm not saying internal control systems are less important as compared to audit risk no both major topics are equally important but somehow somewhere substantive procedures are far more important as compared to the other major topics so i will not you know come up with exact percentage but i can easily let you know that approximately approximately you can say well you can say that ethics corporate governance internal audit 
ethic, corporate governance, internal audit, completion, review, and reporting. These four minor topics would make approximately 30% of your total mark, including section A. Then substantive procedures would make approximately another 30% of your total marks, including section A, and then audit risk, audit risk, internal control systems would make another 20% mark. Now, obviously, approximately, approximately, this could be 20 to 25. Similarly, this could be 20 to 25. You never know. Obviously, no one exactly knows what's going to be the exact weightage for the March 2024 attempt. To be very honest, does it make a huge difference? Well, it was a valid, genuine question, and I've tried to answer it. But, it, but is it going to make a huge difference to your exam approach or is it going to make a huge difference to your you know thought process for the double a not really i believe yes thank you thank you uh, yes i i i think you're right it's not it's not going to make a huge difference i guess indeed we need to realize a couple of things couple of, there are few learning outcomes right now all over the world Tutors and the students are going to prepare and focus on these three things and they will not pay good enough respect to this. What, I'm, what I want to say, so for example, I am a tutor and you're a student. We prob Maybe we are investing 20 hours on internal control systems. Maybe we are investing 22 hours on this major topic. Maybe we're investing 25 hours on this one, 20, 25 hours each. But the tutors and the students will not invest 20 to 25 hours on this area. Though this area is important considering the weight, weightage. What if, I, what if I say, what if I say that these four areas are all 25% each? So the energy, the dedication, which I am going to invest on audit risk, you know, that should be more or less equal to ethics, corporate governance, internal audit, and completion review and reporting. Agree? So this is why sometimes the students fail the paper, and when their my exam performance report comes out, they have scored maybe 48, 49, 47%, and their, their score in the minor topics such as audit report is 10, 15, 20%. So what if they had a question out of the completion review and reporting for 10 mark, and they scored, well, literally nothing, scoring 10%, that is one mark, or maybe two marks, and they end up failing the paper at 48, 49. So maybe there is someone right now listening to me who could let me know in the chat box that he or she scored for example maybe somewhere around the border maybe 48 49 and his or her score in a minor topic was well below the par maybe someone who could let me know if you are also preparing tax along with double a first of all you have to make sure that you start your day with double A. Why? Because you can't do double A once you are tired and fatigued. You do, you can do number crunching even if you are tired. So start with double A, divide your hours, maybe straight three hours double A early in the morning, and maybe another round of two hours for double A in the evening. So maybe five hours for double A and three hours for tax. I, I think eight hours would do the job. So I remember, I'm not going to mention the name, but I remember a very smart guy told me you like maybe on the result day or after the result that he scored 13% in completion review and reporting. 13%. Now you have to imagine, well, we have to assume that the exam 
in relation to completion review and reporting was for 10 marks in total and he scored 13 percent and he failed the paper at 49 now do the math why did he fail the paper so so one of the most obvious reasons behind okay now mohammed sufyan came up with a direct message that he's saying i scored 49 and my score in section a was 12. okay that's a separate story yes we had a lot of such examples in the yesterday session okay i've scored 44 percent in the reporting area and what was your final score Nilish? so just pay good enough respect to the minor topics as well oh so she okay so yeah nilay scored 49 percent in total and the score in the audit reporting area was 44 percent so yeah this is still acceptable somehow but 49 percent with a score of 13 percent in audit report that's what i heard like a month ago so let's go back to the systems and controls. So, well, in uh, what kind of bookish knowledge we should expect out of this area? Examiner could ask you what factors make or what, what are the components of internal control systems? Well, internal control systems are designed and implemented by the management for the sake of management. And a good internal control system will have the following component control environment what do we mean by control environment the environment of the organization would become part of the internal control system now the environment of the organization if it is a controlled environment the attitude the awareness and the actions of the top management would set up the control environment so who's going to set up the control environment the top management and there is going to be a trickle down effect so control environment is extremely important and who establishes it, who decides it, who runs the show? Well, the top management. And there are three E's, attitude, awareness, and actions of the top management. And within the internal control system, within a good internal control system, there is going to be a, a methodology, a process where you are going to assess the risk. And risk assessment is going to be really important. So risk assessment process has to be there so that we could identify the risk well in time and we could come up with counter actions or corrective actions in advance. A good internal control system will have information system we, they, that will have input controls that will have processing controls. A good internal control system will have controlled activities such as segregation of duty, physical controls. A good internal control system, even even if it is damn good on paper, even if there is no issue whatsoever, but a good internal control system will have an element of monitoring of controls on a continuous basis. So these are the components of an internal control system. How are we going to document the client system? The question is why as an auditor, I want to document the client system. I need to document the client system because I want to be the recurring auditor. Next year, when I will restart the audit for the same client for the next year, I do not wish to start from the scratch because I do acknowledge and I do realize, just like in Magpie from the last night's question, that when it is a new audit client, we lack the accumulated knowledge, we lack the information, yes, we lack the relevant experience for that particular client. So we need to gather information and by when I say we need to gather information, one of the important aspects is we need to document the client system. Now, if you have to document the client system, there are multiple ways of documenting the client system. First of all, you have to pen them down. Well, one way is called narrative notes. So you need to write down how the system operates in black and white form. The second method is called flowcharts. So we'll create a diagrammatic representation. The third method is called questionnaires. And there are two types of questionnaires. 
the first one is called internal control questionnaires and the second one is called internal control evaluation questionnaires now what are internal control questionnaires well it's a ready made list of questions list of controls rather and i would hand over that list to the client and i would ask them whether or not those controls are in place or not if you have those controls in place please tick it if you are not having those controls in place please cross it on the you know slightly different to that internal control evaluation questionnaire questionnaire means i will ask the client that this is the risk they will say yes it is i will say what controls do you have in place against it so this is relatively time consuming and it's called internal control evaluation questionnaires so these four methodologies of documenting the client system are extremely and equally important and not only you have to learn the description from with a with a sentence or two you need to learn an advantage and a disadvantage as well similarly within the internal control system examiner could ask you why certain deficiencies are significant what factors you need to consider before deciding that this deficiency is significant and i need to report it to those charged with governance so yes auditors they do come up with an audit report but along with that they also report the significant findings from the audit such as control deficiencies to those charged with governance now am i going to report all the deficiencies to those charged with governance not really i need to report only those deficiencies which are significant now what factors are you going to incorporate in your mind when you have to decide which deficiency is significant well i think if a deficiency is if a if a deficiency has a high frequency i might treat it as a significant one if a deficiency leads to other deficiencies i might treat the deficiency as a significant one if a deficiency has got an has got to do with an important financial reporting aspect i might treat it as a significant deficiency so that's your another straight forward bookish knowledge another bookish knowledge is examiner could ask you well how many systems do we have in double a we have got six system six system six internal control system sales system purchase system payroll system inventory bank and cash non current assets examiner could ask you what are the objectives of the sales system what are the objectives of the purchase system so for example let's talk about sales system objectives of the sales system it's a straight forward bookish knowledge we want to make sure we only you know deal with customers who are going to pay a in full b promptly according to the policy we want to make sure through the sales system that all the orders which we are going to receive must be processed on a timely basis we with the help of the sales system one of the objective is we want to make sure that all the orders which are dispatched they must be dispatched to the correct customer and they must be dispatched in full we want to make sure we do not miss any order so we want to dispatch each and every order we want to make sure once we have dispatched a particular order we want to make sure we have actually invoiced it as well and we want to make sure within the sales system that the invoices are correct they are raised accurately with respect to the discount with respect to the price with respect to the tax we want to make sure that only valid sales are recorded and we want to make sure we chase the debtors we raise the invoice on a timely basis and then we chase the debtors on a timely basis so if the credit control department is not working efficiently or they are not working at all or if they are not chasing the debtors if they are not evaluating the credit worthiness of a new customer if the good dispatch notes are one copy of the good dispatch note is not sent to the accounts department so that they could raise the the invoice all those little things are all deficiencies within the sales system so what are the objectives of a good sales system to make sure we don't have any deficiencies so this is another straight forward bookish knowledge 
you got to prepare the objectives of each and every system it's a it's a common sense thing for example if we are you and me if we are working in the payroll department of company x well i think our objective would be no fake or no ghost employee we would love to make sure that the calculations regarding the gross pay and net pay are absolutely correct we would like to make sure there is no unauthorized access to the payroll system standing data should be kept up to date if there is a change in standing data that must be reviewed and authorized we want to make sure that the calculations and the payments to employees are absolutely correct especially with respect to tax and deduction we want to make sure that the payments are made on time and if we are holding the tax you know as a as a as a as an agent we want to make sure we want we would we would be paying to the fbr or the of the of the uh, you know the relevant revenue collection department or the relevant tax authority such as hmrc we want to make sure we are making those payments correctly and on a timely basis so these are the objective of the payroll system are we clear are we clear with all that can i have some confirmation okay thank you very much before i move to the main event the application side of it what if we so this is the book, straight forward bookish night bookish file 2 this is the the next 5 minute would make you realize how you can prepare the straight forward bookish file number 2 for yourself by yourself and i think if you are going to make a file for yourself by yourself it's going to be absolutely great but still well i think those who have already prepared such files they will be happy to share those files in the relevant whatsapp group yeah why not so the file number 1 was about question from magpie magpie to record a communication file number 2 it will start from dali and it will end on peer international so let's see and let's you know briefly discuss those things so this is the first question in your latest exam kit okay that's great uh kadeen and kadeen is saying already made two files of bookish knowledge from auditors and internal controls by myself and i am sure kadeen will share the file in the relevant whatsapp group okay already the same already did the same okay thank you imran so yeah you go you why why i am asking you to share the file if there is anyone who has not made the file okay he or she would at least have an idea that this, this is not mission impossible if somebody is not interested in typing the stuff for himself or for herself by by you know one has to do it on your own so one can you know go through that way okay i made three files okay amza that's great okay so what about dali let's go to let's check out dali so dali is a question which has total 30 marks so dali is a painful question there is no guarantee that you will have a 30 mark question on audit risk or you will have 30 mark question on controls so this question dali is from the same paper where you had magpie because magpie has 20 marks automatically dali has to have 30 mark so you never know for example the next question with taker the next question with taker yes it has 20 marks so it could be 30 marks or it could be 20 marks so what about let's go back to dali the part d is about corporate governance so it's an application based point well please check it out dali last part has got corporate governance so that is why this question called dali is in my top 20 because once you will prepare dali automatically you are focusing on a minor topic 
such as corporate governance as well. DALI has got substantive procedures as well. Definitely, DALI has got the main event, which is about identifying and explaining five deficiencies. You need to recommend five controls to address those deficiencies. And once those controls have been implemented, you need to apply five tests of controls to assess whether the controls are operating effectively or not, assuming they have been implemented. What about the part A? One mark per point. And when you will check out this question, either you are going to score full five out of five or you are going to score nothing at all. Why I'm saying that? Because this is what I call straightforward bookish knowledge. So if it is straightforward, you should not read the entire question for this one. This part A and these five marks, this part A and these five marks have got nothing to do with the question itself. Note, you do not need to refer to the scenario to answer, to answer this requirement. So such exam requirements would make at least 10, maximum 12, 13, 14, 15 marks of your final exam out of 70 marks within the section B. So imagine if you score 12 out of 15 in your straightforward bookish knowledge. Okay, if you score 8 out of 10 in your straightforward bookish knowledge, and if you scored another 24 out of 30 in your section A, I think you will not fail this paper, no matter what. Just imagine you scored 12 out of 15 and you score and you scored 24 out of 30. So that's your score from section A. That's your score from straightforward bookish knowledge. Your final score stands at 36 out of 45 and you need another 14 out of 55, which is walk in the park. Easy, easy. So that is why I always emphasize that when you are preparing double A, when you are attending lectures, when you are attending classes, do give respect to the straightforward bookish knowledge, do give respect to the section A as well. So what are those five components? Well, we already had a discussion on that. And you need to make sure you are, in order to score five out of five, you don't need to write four, four, five, five, three, three sentences on each. No, couple of sentences, but those couple of sentences should be straightforward. They should have, you know, minimum involvement of your creative writing. Do not rely on your writing. These are, these would be simple, straight sentences. Okay, what about wit taker? Well, wit taker part A. Describe four matters the auditor may consider in determining whether a deficiency in internal control is significant. Yes, a deficiency would be considered as a significant one if the frequency is on the higher side. If it leads to other deficiencies, this that would be considered as a significant if it has got an important role and an important value with respect to financial reporting process. If it lead, if it of because of if that deficiency creates vulnerability and leave, and creates a huge risk of fraud, well, that deficiency would be considered as significant one. So these, this is a, another straightforward bookish knowledge, and you do not need to refer to the scenario to answer this question. Another straightforward bookish knowledge. Okay, for me, Ranian, one of my favorite questions. For me, Ranian, what about it? Describe the limitations of the internal control. Okay, I didn't discuss that earlier on. Full 20 marks on one topic, that is systems and control. Part A is about internal controls. Part B is about internal control. You are done with the question. Full 20 marks on internal controls. What are the limitations of internal controls? Well, there could be a human error. There could be a human error. Any other deficiency from anyone? Oh, well, any other limitation? Well, there is a possibility. What if, what if, Let's let's imagine an organization. Let's let 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 assume a company. What if there are two employees in an organization? Well, one of them is called 
one of them is called sharif the other one is called well what what if the other one is called dummy name okay one the other one is called bhutto okay what if sharif and bhutto amalgamate and they say okay you scratch my back i'll scratch yours what happens then well this is a limitation of the system now you can't do a thing because those two culprits have joined and they have shaken the hand now you can't do a thing so there are limitations of the internal uh control well there are limitations of the internal control systems so this is again a straightforward bookish knowledge you do not need to refer to the scenario okay castle castle courier castle courier okay very 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 common exam question part a describe narrative note with the help of a solid sentence and then write a disadvantage of the narrative note similarly examiner could ask you to describe narrative note and then write the advantage describe internal control questionnaire and write the disadvantage similarly the examiner could ask you to describe flow chart and then write the advantage so as a student i think i need to prepare all of them narrative notes internal control questionnaires internal control evaluation questionnaires flow chart advantages for all the all of them disadvantages for all of them so this is a very common and a very important straightforward bookish knowledge swift part a oh part a now you got to describe narrative notes you got to describe flow chart you got to describe questionnaires and then you have to write not the disadvantages rather disadvantages imagine yourself in a position where you are attempting this paper as a final exam and if you could score 6 out of 6 and if you have already scored 24 out of 30 in section a well you have hardly attempted 36 mark paper and you have scored 30 there are more straightforward bookish knowledge which would be seen in the next question imagine note on a very important question because it has non current assets non current assets was non current non current asset is not usually seen in, in any other question part a describe four matters which the auditor may consider in determining whether a deficiency is significant or not well i think it's a it's a it's a repetition isn't it amber jack amber jack part a list four limitations of internal control components it's a repetition but there is something extremely important in amber jack is there anyone who could let me know why amber jack is so special what is one thing which makes amber jack extremely special the answer is right in front of you thank you zoha hamza janvi pezan thank you very much amber jack has got covering letter for two marks if i have to make the double a paper for the march 2024 attempt trust me i am super dead sure that i will test covering letter for two marks why why i am emphasizing it so much is there anyone who already knows my answer why i am going to come up with covering letter for sure in the double a i will definitely incorporate these two marks anyone who knows the reason well thank you hamza thank you tanish thank you thank you those who already know my reason you rock because from september 2022 so it's been six attempts so far september 2022 december 2022 and then four attempts of 2023 so it's been six attempts that the professional mark have raised from four to badi hai ishara ki ta iski pe to iski pe okay okay so the professional marks have jumped up from 4 to 20 in triple a now those 20 professional marks 
have got something to do. Obviously, I'm not going to teach 20 professional marks right now, but those 20 professional marks have got a lot to do with that covering letter. I can easily say that those two marks is actually a flavor of the upcoming 20 professional marks. Are you going to prepare and are you going to attend AAA somewhere? Well, I hope so sooner than soon. I really hope so in a year's time, maybe after four attempts, maybe after three attempts. I hope so. I hope so. AAA is extremely important because audit gives you wings. Chartered accountant means compliance. A, the reporting aspect, FR and SBR, we got to prepare the financial statement in accordance of, you know, with respect to the applicable financial reporting framework. That's what chartered accountant is. And then the chartered accountant, the superior chartered accountant, the boss, the big boss, the auditor has to make sure that the financial statements have been prepared with all, you know, with respect to all, you know, in, in accordance with the applicable financial reporting framework. So the reporting and auditing, that's what chartered accountant is. All other papers and all other streams, to be very honest, are byproduct of a chartered accountant. The chartered accountant means compliance. He or she has to make compliance and has to ensure compliance. So reporting and auditing are so important. And that is why SBR is a mandatory exam, which is the advance of FR. So AAA is extremely important. And if I am a AA examiner, I will make sure that the students are gearing up towards AAA. So I will test those two marks. So anyone out there who's listening to me, what if you are or you were not preparing these two marks, please prepare these two marks covering letter. In a covering letter, we talk about three things. Number one, dear management, try to understand and realize because it's a letter that we are addressing to those charged with governance. Please realize the deficiencies which I've discussed below. They are, they, they are not 100% comprehensive. There could be other deficiencies as well. These are the deficiencies which I identified during the audit. B, you are not supposed to share this report, those deficiencies, my recommendation with any third party without my consent. C, the third and the final, if you've got any other queries or concerns, please do not hesitate to contact us. So you need to prepare covering letter. Anyone out there who has not prepared the covering letter, you can prepare the covering letter in 15 minutes. And let me recommend a couple of questions against it. Number one, Amber Jack, which is the question on sale system right in front of you. Number second question, anyone who could who could let me know? Anyone, anyone, come on, come on, Zoha, anyone. Hamza, Kavish, thank you. Fox Industries is the second question, which is about covering letter. Both the questions are available in your portal. Both the questions, I think we did both the questions in the in the class during the session, and both the questions are. Uh, are available in your example. Is this clear? Okay, let's continue. What about freesia? Part A, narrative notes, questionnaires, description, advantage, disadvantage, old story. And freesia is in my top 20. Why? Because it also has the flavors of corporate governance. Chamomile, why it is important for auditors to communicate throughout the audit with those charged with governance? Yes, it is important for us to communicate. Maybe if we are going to identify a, def a deficiency, if we are going to identify a problem, and if I'm not going to communicate, well, how they are going to realize their mistake? What if they are willing to make an improvement, but if I'm not going to communicate, how they are going to do it? Identify two examples of matters which the auditor may communicate to those charged with governance. What are you going to communicate? I think you are going to communicate. You should communicate any scope limitation. I think you should communicate any significant control deficiency. So yes, again, it's a straightforward bookish knowledge and the story goes on. Let's conclude the story with Raspberry. One of my all time favorite questions, as you all know, my favorite questions are the berries. First of all, auditress question, Blackberry. Number second, this control system question on payroll system called Raspberry. And number third, 
the question on substantive procedure along with the flavor of impact on audit report and the name of that question is called gooseberry so part forget about part a forget about part b what about part c and d part c compare and contrast the role of external and internal audit straightforward bookish knowledge out of the internal audit part d describe the assignments the internal audit department of resbury could carry out well they could carry out for example asset verification assignment value for money audit and the list goes on so this these 10 marks are all relevant to internal audit and these are pretty much straight forward bookish knowledge and the list and your exam preparation goes on is this clear can i have can i have confirmation yes janvi you are absolutely right fraud yes i need to discuss and report the fraud with those charged with governance immediately thank you so from khalid aziz to yusuf from tawish to janvi to abdullah to kadeem everyone and everyone is clear laya muskan everyone so well done two thumbs up you got to prepare your own file for the straight forward bookish knowledge thank you alina and hamad well done okay it's time for me to go back to the exam requirements examiner would give you a story examiner would come up with the description of a sales system maybe of a purchase system maybe a combination of two three systems and examiner would ask you to identify and explain for example five deficiencies in the company system now when i say identify the deficiency you should not come up with creative writing no 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 when i say identify five deficiencies it means you got to identify the deficiency from the question itself but you got to explain the deficiency using your own brain so the marking scheme is if you are going to identify the deficiency you will score half mark and when you will explain the deficiency you will score another half mark and let me repeat you have to identify the deficiency from the question itself so no creative writing you should be smart enough to copy the deficiency and extract the deficiency from the question itself and then you have to explain and the identification will score half mark explanation will score another half mark once you have identified and explained the deficiency the examiner would ask you to provide recommendation now what do i mean by recommendation if it is a deficiency it means the control is looking poor on paper and you being the auditor you being the competent person you being unbiased you being independent you will recommend a control a good control a promising control to overcome that deficiency so provide a recommendation to address a deficiency a recommendation so if the past paper solution has got two three recommendations that's for your clarity and understanding one recommendation will score one mark so the exam requirement 2 and 3 this is the most common exam requirement when it comes to double a are we all clear with respect to these two exam requirements and the marking scheme relevant to it are we clear with respect to the exam requirement and the marking scheme please share a kaplan kit that enable copy and search yes i did i shared it yesterday i i will share it again after the class okay let's go back to the exam requirements another exam requirement which if you want to practice you can practice a question called swift identify and explain five direct controls or five key controls or seven direct controls or seven key controls now what do i mean by direct controls a direct control or a key control is a control which looks promising on paper which looks great on paper it sounds good so as an auditor i want to rely on that control so i need to identify a good control from the question again strictly no creative writing no words on your own or by your own not at all you got to identify the key control from the question 
and then you have to explain the identification will score half mark the explanation will score another half mark once you have identified and explained the direct control well if you truly want to rely on that before you place reliance on that you should test it and you need to test it with the help of a uh, with the help of an action and that action is called test of control all over the world auditors have got two types of procedures a where we want to test the control system and it's called test of control b which is not the scope right now where i want to test the assertion regarding the financial statements and we call it substantive procedure so we need to identify and explain controls and then we have to come up with a test of control so the identification of key control will score one mark the explanation will score sorry it will score half mark and the explanation will score another half mark and a test of control will score one mark so are we all clear so a direct control is a good control absolutely it's a control which looks great on paper it sounds good it is promising on paper and before i seek reliance on that i need to test it and i will test it with the help of a test of control so please share 20 most important questions at the end of the class yes i will don't worry okay so i think we are done with the exam requirements and we are done with the marking scheme and as i speak right now i need to learn six things i need to identify i need to learn how to identify the deficiency from the question how to explain it how to identify the key control how to explain it how to write a recommendation because 99% students score half mark per recommendation they don't score one mark because they lack because they lack value addition yes and how to score one mark in test of control so we need to learn how many things i uh, we need to we need to learn six things there is it important to mention business risk in explanation well hold hold your question i had a question and i thought they need the deficiency that's why i failed oh oh forget about it think about thursday 7th march 2024 okay let's start with the first one how are we going to identify the deficiency well common symptoms or common indicators are poor or lack of segregation of duty or maybe no segregation of duty at all now why segregation of duty is important well the negative consequences of it must be part of your explanation i'll i'll explain seniority of staff so if i am not senior enough but i am handling a task an activity which must be handled by someone with great experience and authority so that would be considered as a deficiency if there is no element or no phenomena of authorization and the transactions could be proceeded without the authorization well that should be considered as a deficiency if my work if i'm a junior and when i am submitting my work to the senior there is no review of work well that would be considered as a deficiency if a task is being performed manually though it could have been automated that could have been with the help of you know some computer some software well that should be considered as a deficiency if the question says a particular activity is not carried out look for the word no or not in the question that would be an indication of a deficiency maybe there are deficiencies with respect to documentation maybe not good enough copies for the good dispatch note maybe not maybe the invoices are not sequentially numbered so documentational issues so with the help of this you can score half mark but how are we going to score another half mark okay let me tell you one example so if an activity is being carried out manually though it could have been transformed into you know some automatic you know maybe a software or maybe cctv maybe some other kind of automation could have been there well it's a deficiency why now i need to explain 
because there is a possibility considering it's being carried out manually ahmed could commit a fraud and an or an error which may go undetected and if it would have been through automation i think the risk of fraud and error would have been reduced significantly so for example let's see if there is no segregation of duty and if ahmed is involved with pretty much everything the risk of fraud and the risk of error would be on a higher side no one will be able to identify or no one will be able to raise a question or no one will be able to figure it out if a fraud or an error is being carried out so if there is a weak or no segregation of duty that basically helps or that basically facilitates in the fraud or that could be lead to a situation where the company will not be able to identify an error so for example if i am not senior enough but i am authorizing and approving the new customers by evaluating their credit worthiness and i am deciding their credit worthiness well there is a possibility i might establish credit limits too high leading to bad debts or i might establish or come up with credit limits too low and as a result of that the company would lose the future sales because if the credit limits are not good enough the company would face the negative consequences in e in either case is this clear how are we going to get another half mark we need to explain the deficiency and when we will explain the deficiency ideally speaking we should start with a sentence or we should start our sentence with something like this could result in this could result in credit limits being established either too high or too low or 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 i can say this could result in credit limits being set too high leading to the risk of bad debt or it could lead to uh, credit limits being too low uh, which could result in loss of future sales if what if the payroll calculations are performed by the software automatically but no one ever checks the calculation I mean, no one ever checks the calculation not even on a sample basis if there are certain calculations or errors in the calculation of pay maybe in relation to the tax deductions or any other deductions there is a possibility we company might be paying unnecessarily over or maybe um, maybe company is paying over and above the required level of the pay or maybe it's the other way around which could result in loss of employee goodwill or that could also lead to extra cost for the company so you need to explain what negative impact it could create on the company loss of future sales loss of customer goodwill maybe cash flow problems maybe any negative impact on the business so i do not wish to discuss business risk right now but these are the things you need to discuss definitely these things are going to create problems for the company so i often say when you are explaining a deficiency and if you want to score full mark make sure you identify the deficiency from the question and make sure when you start explaining it make sure you wake up the client make sure you wake up wake them up your explanation should wake them up your explanation should be an eye opener for them because if you are going to wake them up if you are going to make them realize that this deficiency could lead to these 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 problem only then they are going to address those deficiencies so your explanation should be an eye opener for the client okay what about recommendation as i just mentioned few minutes ago that greater majority or significant majority would score half mark out of the recommendation why because greater majority would just repeat the deficiency they will just rewrite the deficiency so for example when ahmed has finished of his work no one reviews it so a student will say when ahmed is done with his work that should be reviewed that's it so for example payroll calculations are all performed automatically but no one reviews it or no one performs the arithmetic check on a manual basis on a sample basis the student would recommend well those calculations should be performed 
you know, on a sample basis. Student is just going to rewrite the deficiency. Do not just repeat the deficiency. Okay. Do not just repeat the deficiency means, yes, I might have to repeat certain words out of the deficiency, but I'm not supposed to just repeat the deficiency means I have to add more. I need to add more. I need to add more value. So, for example, sales invoices were not sequentially numbered. That's what the question says. A student would say sales invoices should be sequentially pre-numbered. That's not good enough. You need Yes, you had to repeat the deficiency, but you had to add more as well. The sales invoices should be sequentially pre-numbered and on a regular basis, a sequential review should be performed and discrepancies should be investigated. That's where you have added more value. So maybe someone senior should perform the sequential review. So you need to add value maybe by you know, incorporating who should perform the activity, when it should be performed, maybe some frequency. You know, you need to add more just to make sure you are coming up with a recommendation which will score full one mark last, well, approximately last, second last. How are you going to identify the direct control? Well, direct controls are the opposite of deficiency. So it's going to be good. It's going to be promising. You will identify the direct control from the question itself. And when you have to explain the direct control, you will start exactly, you know, in a way which is exactly opposite of deficiency. Over there, you said this could result in. Now you have to say this ensures that this reduces the risk of or this minimizes the risk of. So this is how you score another complete one mark by identifying and explaining the direct control. Well, last but surely not the least, one test of control means one mark. You can inquire management. You can use test data or dummy data. You can observe the client and activity. You can select a sample of documents, sample of invoices. You, you need to look up to the reports. You need to look, inspect the document by selecting a sample. If you are looking forward, whether Ahmed has reviewed it or, it or not, look for the authorized signature because if Ahmed actually reviewed it, we must have created an evidence, maybe in the form of the signature. So look for the signatures. So these are your test of controls. Yes, you can, for some deficiency, sometimes you can even say that as a result of that, a particular financial statement item could be materially misstated as well. Yes, you can do that. Okay, what about, yeah, okay, what can you please explain covering letter? Okay, so for covering letter, there are two solid questions in your exam kit. The first one is called Amberjack. The second one is called Fox Industries. Now, what about those letters? Or what about those questions? As an external auditor of Amber Jack Company, you got to write a report to management. So this is not a report which is going to be publicly available. It's a secret report from auditor to those charged with governance. In respect of the sales and dispatch system, and you have to identify and explain seven deficiencies along with seven recommendations. And along with that, a covering letter. And the covering letter will have two extra marks. Two marks will be awarded. Okay, then what? And that covering letter has got nothing to do with the question. So, board of directors, Amber Jack, ABC. You can cut it down, just write ABC. Okay. Please find in close the report to management on deficiencies in internal controls identified during the audit for the year ended 30th April 20X5. You can use copy paste technique. Okay. And the report will consider deficiencies in the sale and dispatch system and the recommendation to address those deficiencies. So that's what the exam requirement says. Please note that this report only addresses the deficiencies which we identified during the audit. And if further testing would have been performed, maybe more deficiencies could have been identified or could have been reported. So I just want the client to realize that don't consider that these are 100% deficiencies. There could be other deficiencies as well. 
Now, this report is for you only, and it, you should not share it with anyone else. And if you have got any other queries or concerns, please do not hesitate to contact us. That's it. For every question, this is going to be the format. Huh? Yes, there is going to be a change. Maybe in Fox, in Fox Industries, I would say this report considered efficiencies in the purchase and payment system and recommendations to address those efficiencies. This is going to be the change. That's it. Is it clear to everyone now? Can I have guess on that on covering letter? That's it. Okay, so it means all of you are clear regarding the covering letter. Okay, now let's see which questions we did during the session and which questions we missed sir. during the session. Hi, sir. So, Hello, sir. Yes, please. Yes, please. Uh, I, I wasn't seeing for the cover letter explanation, but I seem like it's it. Like it's, 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 I didn't hear it exactly. But if, if you can do that in another class, it's fine. No worries. When you are going to draft a covering letter for whatever client, for whatever past paper question, for whatever system, mm -hmm. first thing which you need to tell them is that this report has got deficiencies and recommendations regarding your purchase system, regarding your sales system. And these do not treat these deficiencies as an absolute or 100% deficiencies because there could be other deficiencies as well. So I just want to make sure, I want to reduce my liability. I just want them to realize that there could be other deficiencies. I will say these are the deficiencies which I identified during the audit. So there could be other deficiencies as well. And then I will, I will let them know that this report is for their use only. They should not share it with any other third party without my permission, without my consent. Last, if they've got any queries or concerns, you can always contact me. It's a formality. It's a formality. So I just want you to realize once I have drafted the covering letter for you maybe. So, so dear sir, please find the deficiencies along with the recommendations regarding your sales system. There could be other deficiencies. Mind you, these deficiencies are the ones which I identified during the audit. There could be other deficiencies as well. And if you have got any other queries, do not hesitate to contact us and do not share this report with anyone else without my consent. Is this clear to you now? Yes, sir. Clear. Clear, sir. Thank you very much. Great. So these are the questions relevant to internal control systems. Yes, these are the questions relevant to internal control systems. Now, if you are part of my batch, well, I'm sure we did. Please correct me if I'm wrong. We did Whittaker. We did Pomeranian. We did Castle Courier. We did an extremely different question called Swift. We did Snowdon. We did Amberjack. We did Prezia. Well, I believe we did Chamomile. Maybe I think the lecture on Raspberry is also available. I'm not sure, but I think we did Comet Publishing as a yes, I think we did Equestrian, Fox Industries, Lily Glass Window, Peer International. So there are more than one dozen questions approximately, which I'm sure you have prepared during this session. So I have to come up with a question, which is a new question for everyone. And that is why I am going towards the question called Dali, which is a very important, very recent and a very difficult question. Let's go to Dali. Shall we, without any 
सरप्राइज डाली इज पार्ट ऑफ माई टॉप ट्वेंटी क्वेश्चन फॉर द मार्च ट्वेंटी ट्वेंटी फोर अटेम्प्ट ओके शैली सिंह वेन वॉज स्विफ्ट डन वेल इफ वी डिड नॉट कवर स्विफ्ट एज अ लाइव इन अ लाइव क्लास आई एम श्योर स्विफ्ट मस्ट बी देयर ऑलरेडी देयर एज अ रिकॉर्डेड लेक्चर is there anyone any any classmate who could let me know is, is do we have swift in the wipis portal do we have swift is there anyone who has attended lecture on swift through the wipis portal okay sara has raised a question do the top 20 question changes for every attempt well for triple a yes the big time because for triple a i have to come up with top 20 questions along with top 10 technical articles and they change big time for double a yeah you can say that you know at least for two three attempts things would remain the same and then with the september attempt the examiner approach changes you know whenever any whenever there is any change in the in the syllabus whenever there is any change in the exam format whenever there is any change in the acc's official study guide whenever there is any change in the methodology the change is always implemented in the september attempt first to begin with september attempt so yeah you can say for double a things remain pretty much simple and straight forward for at least a year or so okay welcome tara so is there anyone who is part of the wipis what about swift i'm sure swift is there i'll, I'll let you know where is swift okay maybe swift is not available in the crash well swift is available in the crash batch as well i'm sure anyway what about dali well i think we are already done with the part a of dali because the part a of dali is a straight forward bookish knowledge photo mutual okay we are done with the part a so let's go to the part b we have to identify and explain five deficiencies five recommendations five test of controls okay forget about the part c right now okay thank you very much thank you so it is on the portal thank you okay what about part d describe three corporate governance deficiencies faced by the company and provide a recommendation to address each deficiency okay so for part d we have to read this part of the question so let's start with part d let's just start with the with a minor topic called corporate governance so before i read this and before i re start reading this portion we have to make sure we read the introduction first so it is first july 2006 and this company is a listed company that's the very important information try to make you have it today's date is 1st july try to make a habit of underlining the client's year end 30th september after few months three months and this is a listed company that's important this company manufactures double glazed windows and doors the company's year end is 30th september who are you you are an audit supervisor with cooper and company and you are in the process of reviewing the following extract from the internal controls documentation in the preparation of the forthcoming audit so there is a story about payroll system there is a story about non current assets and there is a story about bank and cash now listen to me listen to me if you have already prepared snowed on you will realize this portion is a piece of cake if you have already prepared raspberry and swift especially raspberry because both raspberry and swift are completely and fully focused on payroll systems you will realize that this portion of the question is a piece of cake for you and if you have already prepared well caterpillar or chamomile those questions are on bank and cash you will realize that this portion is a piece of cake for you so who's going to fail the paper nobody should if you are going to be honest with you at the end of this class at the end of this question 
I will again ask you, is it old or new? And those, yes, Snowden, yes, Snowden has non-current assets, yes. Okay, maybe Snowden has got bank and cash as well. Okay. So this is about part B. We don't have to worry a lot about part B. Let's focus on a minor topic. During the year, the chairman of the company resigned. During the year, the chair of Dali company resigned due to his other commitments. And Fred Johnson, who is the CEO of the company, took over this role. Any deficiency in the corporate governance, with respect to corporate governance. Thank you very much, Tanishq. Janvi, yes, absolutely. If Mr. Fred is going to be in the role of both CEO and chairman, he will have unfettered powers. He will be a one-man army. Nobody will be able to constructively challenge his decisions. He will be too powerful. And this is not allowed in accordance with the best practices of corporate governance. Mind you, the chairman always has to be someone independent. And a CEO is never considered as an independent person. That is why the appointment of chairman is always from the outside of the organization. So what should be the recommendation? For Mr. Fred can continue with the role of the CEO, but for the role of chairman, the company must sign someone completely independent someone with great authority and experience and someone from the outside of the organization. Can I have yes from you if you are absolutely clear on that? Can I just have a lot of yes so that we could move on? Are we, we, do we, can we score two marks out of the six we need to score? Okay, we are done with one. Thank you. Fred has recently written to all shareholders, the same guy, Mr. Fred, has recently, maybe he drafted an email to all the shareholders to inform them that any questions or comments they may have could only be raised at the company's AGM, that is annual general meeting, and that any other communication with the board is not possible. That's another deficiency in the within the company's structure of corporate governance. You can't deny communication. You cannot, you know, you cannot ask the members of the company not to have any communication, you know, until or unless they have an AGM. This is not how the company would be, you know, controlled. And this is not how the company needs to be operated. This is another deficiency. This is, again, not allowed because surely the members of the companies, they are the principal, they've got the right. And as members of the company, they, if they have, if they have got certain concerns, they should be allowed to communicate with the board as a whole. So yes, this is a letter which has been drafted not to all the stakeholders but to the members of the company. Okay, the directors, the executive directors' remuneration is set by the remuneration committee. Good, no deficiency. I hope so. There is no executive director in the remuneration committee. I really hope so. Because in Texophone Enterprises, the remuneration was established by the re remuneration committee, but finance director was part of the remuneration committee. So that was the de deficiency in Texophone Enterprises. A question in top 20. The non-executive director's remuneration is set by the board and is based on pre-tech profit targets, which are agreed by the board at the start of each financial year. Oh, oh that's a deficiency. The non-executive directors would be financially dependent and would become biased. They should be independent. They should not have any financial interest in the company's performance. If you are going to relate their remuneration, you know, with respect to the company's performance, company's pre-tax profit, they would be considered biased and dependent on the company's performance. They, what should be the recommendation? This, this methodology of remuneration is not correct. Rather, their remuneration should be based upon the time they are willing to commit. Is this clear? We are done with three deficiencies. 
let's continue with the question as the board is of the view that internal control environment is very effective and audit committee has not been established which is a huge compromise on corporate governance without having an audit committee the independence and the independence and the effectiveness of both the external and internal audit would be compromised so we need to establish an inter well, what should be the recommendation the company needs to establish the board needs to establish an audit committee with ha with having at least three members with at least one of them having the relevant financial expertise guys the question asked you for three within the solution surely there are four deficiencies along with four recommendation can i have guess from your side are you all absolutely crystal clear with respect to all four deficiencies along with four recommendations yes the chairman and the ceo is one individual yes the chairman cannot say to the members that do not communicate with us yes the non executive directors salary should not be based on the company's financial performance last but surely not the least the company does not have an audit committee at the moment so only three were required but there are four available you should prepare all four that uh, i think pretty straightforward uh, thing thank you for all those yes okay let's go back to the question and let's move towards the last part of the today's lecture and that is we need to quickly read we need to quickly read the payroll the non current assets okay what about the payroll the company employs 210 staff in its factory who are paid on a weekly basis by bank transfer mind you we have to identify deficiencies factory staff have key card okay so we all imagine we all work in a factory and all of us have got a key card and once we enter the factory we are required to swipe in and we need to swipe out at the beginning and at the end of the shift respectively looks great okay so no human involvement nobody is checking okay amit is present okay janvi is late okay tanish is absent no no man will okay that's great lovely so i'm done with 2.5 lines approximately no deficiency so far this process is supervised wow this process is supervised great we we are done with 2.5 line and no deficiency so far but we don't have to panic hours worked by employees are recorded electronically using the e card system so amit worked for 40 hours tanish worked worked for 37 hours maybe hamad worked for 32 hours all that total number of hours are you know gathered from the electronic system because of that swipe card hours worked by employees are recorded electronically no manually using the key card system which is linked to the payroll system that's great wonderful each week the hours worked are automatically transferred to the payroll system that's great but i really hope so somebody some at some point of time somebody performs manual calculations as well just to confirm that everything is smooth as silk as the process is fully automated no check over this transfer are performed finally finally thank you tanish and thank you uh, khalid khalid your message is not visible to everyone because it's a direct message finally we have got the first deficiency so we need to spend quality time on this one right now because i truly believe if you could learn the chemistry the art of one deficiency the explanation of one deficiency the recommendation of the same and the test of control well you can do the rest of the question on a self study basis 
So you don't have to be, you know, you don't have to write much when it comes to identification of the deficiency. You simply have to say that all those calculations which are, you know, automatically transferred to the payroll system are never checked. They are considering they are, the process is automated. No checks are performed with respect to all those calculations which are automatically transferred to the payroll system. There is a risk that, or this could result in a situation where what if there are certain you know, mistakes or certain errors within that software, within that calculation. So maybe we are paying over and above the required level of payment. Maybe we are underpaying certain employees. Maybe we are overpaying certain number of employees, which in turn, this could result in loss of employee goodwill, which in turn could lead to a situation where the employees would be, you know, dissatisfied. So the recommendation should be on a sample basis, maybe on a monthly basis, on a sample basis, someone senior should perform all those calculations on a manual basis and reconcile all those calculations, all those calculations with the calculations made by the software. And when the guy, when the person who should be senior enough is going to perform all that review, he should create an evidence, maybe in the form of the signature. What should be the text of control? Well, well, I will select a sample of those reconciliations, maybe on a monthly basis. A, I'll make sure that those reconciliations have been performed on a monthly basis. B, I will look for the authorized signatures to confirm that the reconciliations have been performed. And if there was a discrepancy, if there was a thing which was not reconciled, we need to make sure that further actions must be you know, executed. Is this clear? To everyone, the first deficiency. Is this clear? Okay. Let's see how to understand the ideal past paper question. Past paper answer. Okay. Now concentrate, guys. Concentrate. This is this first one is important. At the end of each week. The key card system transfers the hours work to the payroll system. As the system is automated, no checks are performed. Wait, how many marks are we going to score out of it? Option number one, one. Option number two, zero. How many marks are we going to score out of it? Out of this portion, one or zero? Thank you, Hamad, Pezan, Fahim. You guys are absolutely correct. Yes, Janvi, absolutely. We are neither score, going to score full one mark, nor we are going to score zero. And greater majority of the students would commit two mistakes over here. Listen to me. I'm going to invest great time and energy on the first one. The first mistake, which you should not commit, Students will assume that when once they are done with this part, they have scored one mark. This is the first mistake which majority of the students would commit that once they are going to be done with this portion, they will wrongly believe that they have scored full one mark. That's it. This is it. No more effort is required. Although you have just identified the deficiency from the question, and what are you up to? You are writing a report to the goddamn management. And I said earlier on, you got to wake them up. How are you going to wake them up? You got to make them realize what negative consequences that deficiency could have. So where are the negative consequences? Nowhere. So if you are going to wrongly believe that this is going to score your complete one mark, well, 80, if not 90, 70 to 80 percent students are wrong in this case. And that's the mistake number one. So you're not going to do it, yes? You're going to come up with explanation. Second mistake, which many students would commit at this point of time, they will try to write the deficiency. They will try to write the key control 
in their own words. Well, it's it's not a problem if you have got an electrifying typing speed, but I would say, why don't you rely on copy paste technique? It is allowed in your exam. So why not? So mistake number one, don't consider it as 100% once you have identified the deficiency from the question. Secondly, don't try not to create your own word. Try not to create the deficiency with the help of your own structure. Use the copy-paste technique. Even if you are going to copy-paste a little excessive, it's okay, it's no problem. But you have to make sure you press the enter button. You, you, know, you need to press the full stop. You need to move towards the next line. And you need to start with something like that. This could result in error and overpayments or could maybe underpayments, which in turn would result in loss of employee goodwill. If the system is not evaluated manually, this could result in, or simply as the system is automated, no checks are performed, this could result in errors or maybe under or over payments to the employees, which in turn will result in loss of employee goodwill. The company might be facing unnecessary extra cost. Is this clear? Are we done? Now we have scored another half mark. Can I have yes on that? Now I need to score another one mark by coming up with a proper recommendation. So management wants to know what should they do now. I will tell them that this transfer of hours work from the key card system to the payroll, which according to you is never checked. I would say the transfer of hours from the key card system to the payroll should be checked by a senior official in the payroll department. Now, greater majority of the students would assume that they have scored one mark, but trust me, no, you have not. When I say the transfer of hours work from the key card system to the payroll should be checked by a senior official in the payroll department. We, you have scored half mark, but you need to add value. This is what I say, you have repeated the deficiency. It's not a criminal offense to repeat a deficiency, but you've got to add value. How would you add value? Well, you have added a value by saying senior official. Maybe you could say this check should be on a frequent basis. This is how you add value or ask for the solution. And this check should be evidenced by way of signature. So if Amos is the senior person and he performs that reconciliation from the key card system to the payroll system, how would I know? How would the company know? How would the director know? How would the payroll director know? How would the CEO know that this check is actually performed religiously by Amos? Well, if Amos performs this activity on every 10th of the month, Amos must create a report and Amos must create you know, must sign the document. Is this clear? Is this clear to everyone? Now, assuming Ahmed is going to perform this activity on a regular basis, and Ahmed is going to create that report, Ahmed is going to reconcile, how you as an auditor, how are you going to test it? Well, select a sample of, select a sample of those files those, you know, reconciliation where the data was transferred from the key card to the payroll, make sure or look for the evidence. Look for the evidence that the senior person such as Amos has actually reviewed the work prior to the approval, prior to the finalization. Maybe look for the signatures of the Amos prior to the authorization, prior to the payroll being finalized. That's it. If, if Amos is going to make or come up with this review after the payroll has been finalized or once the payment has been made, there is no point of doing that. Khalid is crystal clear and Sara has raised a question which is a question which is a very common question. 
Tara, uh, let me finish this question and I will answer your question. Definitely I will. So we are done with one deficiency. Let's go back to the question. And it'll be slightly quick now. The payroll is run on a weekly basis and the system automatically calculates the wages to be paid. On a sample basis, a payroll clerk checks gross to net pay calculations and compare these to the system generated balances to ensure the accuracy of the payroll system. If any changes to the payroll data are required, the payroll clerk makes the amendment. Who makes the amendment? The payroll clerk makes the amendment. An edit report of any amendment is produced weekly by the system but is not reviewed. What is that efficiency? Guys, all of you have got one minute. Read this paragraph and you will be able to identify another deficiency. So the clerk makes the amendment. And once the payroll clerk makes the amendment, nobody is going to review his or her work. So there is a huge possibility, while well, there is a risk, or this could result in where the clerk is, you know, clerk is amending the data in such a way that maybe he or she is paying over and above or maybe excessive payments to his friends or family members. He could be committing all kinds of fraud or maybe an error would remain undetected. So let's identify the deficiency from the question itself. The payroll clerk perform, or well, the payroll clerk reperforms the calculations, amends the payroll data wherever required, and the edit report is not reviewed. Half mark. This could result in certain errors made by the clerk, or maybe a fraudulent revision is made by the clerk to inflate the pay of the friends and family, which in turn could result in incorrect pay payments being made, which in turn could lead to overstated payables, which in turn could lead to excessive wages for the company. But considering the fact nobody reviews his or her work, the company will not be able to identify. What should be the recommendation? The edit report produced by the clerk should be reviewed on a weekly basis by a senior official before the payroll is finalized. And once the senior person is going to review it, he or she should create an evidence maybe in the form of signature. He or she, the one who is going to review it, should look for unusual changes. If there is any, he should investigate it. What should be the test of control? Same like above. Select a sample of those weekly edit reports. Confirm that the senior person has actually reviewed it. There are official signatures. And if there was any discrepancy, those were further investigated and rectified on a timely basis. So I think if you're crystal clear with respect to the first one, automatically you are clear with the second as well. So we are done with the payroll. Let's go to the non-current assets. The company has a head office and 10 factories. The company has a head office and 10 factories. Okay, 11. With a warehouse included at each factory, the company has an internal audit department which carries out a comparison between all of the assets recorded on the non-current asset register to those physically present in each of the company's 21 sites. Okay, 21 sites. That's an important number. This year's program of visits, which has been planned and carried out on the same basis as previous years, means that by the year end, or maybe by 30th September, internal audit will only have completed the, the will only have completed this comparison at one factory and one warehouse. So they are done with with two, right? And there are 21. So approximately they need 10, 11 years. Yes, Hamza. Now they need 10, 11 more years to complete the entire task and confirm that all the non-current assets which are recognized within the non-current asset register, they actually exist or not. So this control mechanism where you are trying to reconcile the non-current assets with the physical existence of the non-current assets, it's going to take too long. This process is too lengthy. 
and in this way you will not be able to identify so the internal audit department undertakes physical verification of assets each year that's from the question as in the prior years internal audit will only complete the comparison at one factory and one warehouse in the year to 30th september 2005 the company has 10 factories 10 warehouses and a warehouse and a head office therefore on this basis all this all this is from the question itself now on the basis of that the company is going to take over 10 years to complete the physical verification if the non current asset register is not physically verified on a regular basis there is a risk of assets being misappropriated there is a risk that certain assets might be stolen maybe certain assets do not exist at all maybe certain assets are obsolete and the company will not be able to realize so that's the explanation what should be the recommendation well the recommendation would be the recommendation would be the board should set a policy to ensure that comparisons must be completed on a frequent basis if not in one year maybe in two years the company or the board need to consider recruiting more employees within the internal audit department to complete this assignment otherwise another another recommendation could be they could they could outsource this activity to someone else because it's really important this has to be finished off in couple of years not in 10 years so what should be the test of control imagine if the board has decided regarding the new policy for the verification of non current assets i need to review the board minutes and i need to understand what new policy they have designed in order to complete the non current asset verification assignment so this was your this was your third deficiency let's go for another one we are heading towards the last 5 to 7 minutes of the lecture during the year the financial controller changed the company's capitalization accounting policy in accordance with the revised policy only items of a capital nature exceeding 20000 are accounted for as additions to non current assets in the statement of financial position any non current asset purchased below 20000 are written off to the statement of profit or loss as an expense well this policy this change by the financial controller does not seem reasonable because 20000 is a huge amount so there is a possibility that this change is not correct it's not appropriate because when well, well all over the world the companies do have a policy that a certain amount a nominal a minimal amount would always be considered as a revenue expenditure just like for example when it comes to nails in a manufacturing furniture manufacturing company those nails are so you know they are so cheap and they've got such low value that we always treat it as a not exactly as a direct material so with a similar logic with a similar logic this amount has to be reviewed again it is a normal practice so we have identified the deficiency from the question while it is a normal practice for a threshold to be set for capitalization this amount represents a significant change in the accounting policy and significant changes in the accounting policy must be approved by the board this threshold seems to be too high and this threshold has been decided by one individual financial controller which should not be the case rather that that should have been approved by the board so recommendation significant changes to an accounting policy such as this one should be initially discussed and then approved at the board level and the board once this decision has been taken by the board collectively this should be part of the board minutes of the meeting another recommendation should be this amount of 20000 should be reduced maybe to 2000 maybe to 1000 because 2000 uh, represent a significant amount but the more important recommendation is that any significant changes in the accounting policies should be approved and reviewed and discussed by the board as a whole what should be the test of control i will review the board minutes 
Why? For evidence regarding the decision, the discussion about the change in the accounting policy, whether it was approved by the board or not. So we are done with four. We just need one more. Okay, bank and cash. On a weekly basis, a bank payment list is generated for supplier payment. The finance director reviews the total amount of the bank payment list and authorizes it. She then passes it to the financial controller who processes it for a payment. Is there any deficiency? Anyone? There are many, many questions where I have highlighted this deficiency. The finance director reviews the total amount of the bank payment list and then she authorizes it. She does not have any supporting documentation. She does not have any supporting documentation. She will not be able to identify an unusual name, a ghost employee. She will not be able to identify the duplication of a particular name or bank account. What is the deficiency? There are many, many questions. Yes, Daniel, if you could finish off your exam requirement, you need to identify five deficiencies. If you could identify all five from, you know, maybe the from the first two systems, yes, you can ignore the third system. You're allowed to do so. But let me tell you something. If a question has got three systems, the easier part would be in the third system. Yes, Samza, is there anyone who could let me know what other questions had such deficiency? What other questions had such deficiency? I am dead sure we discussed this deficiency earlier on as well. I think this was seen in Fox Industries where the payments to the suppliers were you know, the total amount was only reviewed by the director without the supporting documentation. I think in the Raspberry question, the payroll director, exactly the same. He was just reviewing the total amount without any supporting documentation. So it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a deficiency. Yes, yes, in the chat box, Pezan, Fox, and Raspberry, yes. And there are a couple of more questions where we had such deficiency. I think in the Swift, there was other way around. I think in the script, there was other way around. The director was not only reviewing the total amount, he was also reviewing the supporting documentation and confirming all those things and then authorizing the payment. Thank you, Fezan. Camomile 2, Janvi has also confirmed Raspberry had the same to same deficiency with the same recommendation, with the same test of control. So we are done with another one. The company incurs a lot of petty cash expenditure and the finance department maintains a petty cash flow of 500, which is kept in the safe. It is used for making sundry purchases by the company. When staff wish to purchase sundry items, the required sum of cash is given to the staff member who signs for it. The staff member is required to return any excess money to the finance department, but there is currently no requirement for receipts to be provided. So, well, if they don't require any receipts, I'm not going to return any money. I'll be making purchases which are not business related. I'll be, you know, coming up with fraudulent purchases because nobody asked me for the receipts. That's a deficiency. The, the, the petty cash would be used, not fairly. Okay, thank you, Pazan. Same deficiency in Camomile. No petty cash log was maintained. What does that mean? No petty cash log was maintained. It means... If there is a float of 500, and if I am having 300 right now, I should have received for the remaining 200. But if you guys are not going to submit the receipt, or if I'm not going to ask you for the receipt, well, this whole system is going to be corrupt. You know how important receipts are. Receipts are very important, my friends. Very important. Yes, indeed. So without receipt, Corruption would be all over the place. So I'm not discussing these two deficiencies in detail because as Janvi, Pezan, and Tanish has helped me out, these deficiencies are exactly the same in Raspberry, in Camomile. Let's go for the last. Let's go for the kill. 
the cashier reconciles the main account on a monthly basis. Good. And this contains the highest level of activity. Very good. And reconciles the remaining three bank accounts every three months. The reconciliations are reviewed by the finance director who evidence this review. What's the deficiency? Trust me, this deficiency is also in some other question. Yes, Ahmad. The reconciliations are performed for the other three bank accounts after three months. The company, this is too long a period of time. The company might not be able to identify a particular fraud or an error on a timely basis. I am dead sure there is another question. Now, I think that question was Fox Industries, where one of the account was reconciled on a regular basis, but the other account was reconciled once the payment was made. Too late. So all these three deficiencies are, are old, absolutely old. So there is no requirement for receipt. This could result in sundry purchases being made, which are non-business related. Well done. The finance director authorizes the list without looking at the details of the payment list, without the supporting documentation. There is a risk that we could be paying to fictitious suppliers. We could be paying incorrect amounts to the suppliers. Well done. Another old one. Last. The bank accounts. If the bank accounts are not reconciled on a monthly basis, errors or fraud may go undetected. All bank accounts should be reconciled on a regular basis. And if there is any discrepancy, the corrective actions should be taken by a responsible official. And those reconciliations should be should have a should have an evidence, maybe in the form of signature. So let me me go to the solution and I need your input now. We had to identify five deficiencies and within the solution, I think there are seven. So finance director only reviews without any supporting documentation. It's old. No receipts for petty cash, basically no log. This is an old. Bank reconciliations are performed, but too late. This is old. Once the data is entered into the system, nobody ever checks it. What if the system is corrupt? What if there is, a, if there is an error? That was old. So someone was editing the report, but that edit report was not reviewed. So he could be making fraudulent entries or fraudulent, you know, so this edit report was also old and the physical verification that it, it, it will take approximately 10, 11 years, just like Snowdon, this was also old. Yes, I agree. One of them is absolutely new where they have changed their accounting policy and that change is a significant one, but that change was not discussed and was not approved at the board level. Am I clear? We had to identify seven. Out of seven, six are old. One is new. We, we had to come up with five. Can you please come up with yes? Are you absolutely convinced with that? So those who have attended all those lectures, those who have prepared all those lectures, those who have been consistent, they know that these things are actually old. So this was Dali. Give me a minute, please. Okay, just read this paragraph from the question called with take up. The payroll system automatically calculates wages and calculations for all employees based on standing data. The standing data is, is reviewed regularly to ensure it is still accurate. However, no checks are performed on a monthly payroll calculation, just like the one we did today. Okay, this is non-current asset. Okay, read this portion. The company has a head office and five factories. The company has an internal audit department. And... 
over the three year cycle they need to you know reconcile and the program of visit for the current year means that by the year end only the internal audit will only have completed this comparison at one factory and one warehouse so it means they are going to take five to six years but the policy is about three years is it same just like dali this pomeranian has got a deficiency which is exactly same like dali can i have your confirmation on that and finance director for authorization try to input maybe the same so what i'm trying to tell you is that all those deficiencies are already available in some question or the other out of the seven we had to identify out of the uh, out of the five we had to identify all five could be older ones for for you if you are a well prepared student okay plan no oh, this is triple a give me a minute okay so those who are still wondering about the top 20 questions these are the top 20 questions according to me for the march 2024 attempt i have intentionally made sure that these top 20 questions will cover every aspect of your syllabus from corporate governance to ethics from internal audit to completion review and reporting even going concern and subsequent events as well so these are the list of your top 20 questions for example in herling there is ethics and similarly i think uh in dali as you can see we just did that in dali there is not only internal controls but corporate governance as well so similarly in equestrian there is internal audit for example in raspberry there is internal audit although these questions are focused on internal control systems and for example the spade pitch will have a flavor of going concern hasten will have a flavor of subsequent events pacific danube gooseberry pineapple beach all these questions will have a flavor of impact on audit report if the issue remains unresolved this is a very 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 common exam requirement for five marks you know that five mark is going to be surely in your final paper well 90% assurance any other question from anyone sir can you explain how the time should be allotted to each question in the exam yes good question okay so section a followed by section b section a 30 marks section b first question 30 marks followed by 20 marks and 20 marks so these are your 100 marks now what about time for the section a minimum 30 maximum 40 minutes 60 minutes 40 minutes 40 minutes so add them up 180 minutes is this clear the time management how should be uh, the how should be difference between question writing using tables uh, i didn't get your question janvi because once you will attempt your final exam or if you are going to practice the questions on the accs practice platform the table would be there in advance nihal i will answer your question in your relevant whatsapp group don't worry we'll talk about it in the relevant whatsapp group sir how to do revision in best way like practice too much or do reading you don't have to read much now considering you are entering in the last two weeks of the final exam now you need well you don't have to read a lot of questions and a lot of answers go for the quality not for the quantity try to repeat the same question so if you are going to type and practice same back by and dali twice or thrice each your exam preparation would be far better as compared to reading three four questions three four different questions 
should the difference between internal and external audit using tabular form or paragraph that depends if the examiner has created a table for you because in double a you don't have to create a table if the table is already there okay go for the table if the table is not there, given write down the points is this clear janvi Okay, Mohammad Pezan has raised a question for the rest of these of the days. These 20 questions are enough for practice. Well, I've answered this question in a lot of detail in the yesterday's session. I hope yesterday's session would be available on YouTube. So you've got to check it out. No, those 20 questions are not enough. Once you are done with these 20 questions in the next five to six days, well, if you are a Wiffian, you've got to attempt a mock exam on 21st. Once you are done with the mock exam, maybe you need to, maybe you need another couple of days to prepare few things. And then finally, the last eight to nine days should be strictly invested to the past papers which are available on the ACCS practice platform. On top of everything else, and along with that, most importantly, you need to focus on section A questions. Because last night, I asked everyone if you are brave enough to, to let us know, have you failed the double A paper? The answer was yes, yes, yes. Let me know your marks in section A and I bet my life on it that you have not scored 20 or more. So if you have failed the paper or if you could, you know, contact you double A failures, ask them a question. What was your score in section A? Which could be confirmed through the my exam performance report so if they have paper well that's a mission impossible it's not possible so last night within the chat box at least five to seven students nearly 10 students confirmed that yes they failed yes they failed the paper and their score in section a was 10 12 14 and one of them was 16 that's it Sir, Pineapple Beach Hotel include written representation. Director not signing on written representation. Impact on audit report. Well, if they are not going to write the written representation, that's the scope limitation. And if I've got doubt over their integrity, I might consider resignation from the audit. If it is not possible, I will go for a disclaimer of opinion because if the written representation is an important one, and what if they, the other evidences are not that true in, in, in with, with true spirit? So I will consider either the resignation or, or the disclaimer of opinion. That Pineapple Beach Hotel question, that Pineapple Beach Hotel question is one of my all-time favorite questions. And the last part of the Pineapple Beach Hotel, which is about impact on audit report, is a million dollar question. Million dollar question. Albin has raised the question, sir, should I do section B first? Not at all. Not at all. You need quite a lot of energy and physical and mental strength for the section A. In section B, there is a huge element of repetition. Just like Yesterday, we had to identify seven auditors, and I think out of the nine available in the solution, six were old. Today, tonight, we had to identify five deficiencies, and we were able to identify six which were old. Okay, the seventh one was, was a new one, but at least six were, 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 six were old. So don't go for section B first. Section A is the real pain. Thank you, most welcome, Jacob. Oh, Sarah, thank you very much for this for this reminder. So Sarah gets confused between the test of controls and substantive procedure. Sarah, first of all, well, first of all, you need to work on your concept. Maybe you need to attend lectures again regarding the test of control and the substantive procedure. Secondly, let me help you with a quick tip. A test of control is an action designed and implemented by the auditor. A substantive procedure is an action designed and implemented by the auditor. Now, where is the difference? The difference is what is the objective of that procedure? 
if i am trying to verify whether the client has made compliance with the accounting standard that's a substantive procedure if i am trying to verify whether the client is following the sops the the policies the controls which they claim that's a test of control so for example if i am inspecting the post year end sale invoice to confirm the nrv of the inventory to confirm whether the nrv is over and above the cost or below the cost to confirm whether the year end inventory is understated or not or well overstated or not that's a substantive procedure but if you are trying to confirm whether all the sales invoices are sequentially numbered well sequential numbering is a control designed and implemented by the management so if i am coming up with an action to confirm that it's a test of control i think i've answered your question are we clear okay most welcome that's great okay i think it's time for me to take your lead i wish you all the best for your final exam and in the meanwhile if you are interested in the double a or triple a revision camp well the revision camps are still open and you are more than welcome to join the batch and you would become part of the mock exam as well all you have to do is you need to contact the wipis admission department through the whatsapp text and if you have got any other concerns or queries you are more than welcome to contact me through the same and i am pretty decent when it comes to whatsapp response rate anyway stay aggressive for oh, well do follow that top 20 file do follow all those three instructions and i wish you all the best for your double a i wish you all the best for the rest of your acca journey make a cv for yourself as i mentioned yesterday because full time students are a curse and they are a burden on family you got to move on now you got to make a cv start working acca is only good enough for you if you are working no full time students are welcome trust me so i wish you all the best and i really hope so when you will be starting triple a pretty soon you will let me know that you are actually working so stay blessed and i wish that you will have a successful and a happier day on thursday 7th march 2024 good luck take care bye bye well most welcome jaila sara kale thank you very much thank you for your kind words yes most welcome janvi uh shonita thank you thank you everyone thank you amar thank you sukyan thank you daniel thank you albin thank you fazan thank you yusuf thank you thank you everyone for your kind words i really hope so i played a positive role and i really hope so that you will grasp these two topics uh the systems and controls and the auditors bye bye take care